How has it been uh, Accelo so far? Um, it's been really, really cool, actually. Um, so we have about, uh, I guess, like, what do we have? Like 50 or 60, 50 to 60 engineers using it right now across eight different teams. Um, and I think, I'm not sure about like other platforms like GitLab and stuff, but the code review process on GitHub, like the notification system on GitHub is horrible. It's terrible. Um, and so like when we kind of saw, um, you know, saw your, your, your application, it was just kind of like this, I forget who, I forget who internally sort of like championed the idea of using Slack, but, um, yeah, we kind of latched onto your, to your app and it's been awesome. Like the, the two way communication between GitHub and, and, and Slack is like revolutionized how we kind of deal with code reviews. And it's like really pushed forward our sort of like trunk based development approach too, because the fact that these code reviews are so visible in Slack, everyone, you know, their priority, num priority number one is to always, you know, deal with your code reviews first. So you don't block anyone. Um, and then we can kind of get out, get a, the changes out to production as fast as possible. So yeah, it's been great. It's been great. Well, could you tell yeah. us in a, in a few words what you guys do? Um, so we're a platform for marketing uh, agencies and consultants. Um, so essentially, we help marketing agencies scale their automated reporting uh, for their customers. Um, and that's sort of like what we do now, but we are sort of like hopping on this like AI train, which I guess everyone is at this point, uh, leveraging LLMs and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's in, at its core. Um, We're just like a scalable reporting platform for marketing agencies. And um, so you're the CTO? Yes. Yeah. And founder, uh, co-founder. Cool. And uh, so you mentioned earlier, you have, what, 50, 60 developers working in your company? Yeah. Amazing. C can you tell us a little bit more about your process? Like, how many reviewers do you ask? Uh, how do you assign reviewers? Uh, do you have any specific process uh, to your company? Yeah, so we, um, so basically, um, you know, obviously we, our engineering teams are kind of built using the Spotify squad uh, style structure. Um, and then, you know, there's different components. There's like PMs, designers, uh, there's technical leads, there's back end developers, front end developers. Um, and obviously, depending on the team, they may have one or many of each of those roles, depending on what the team's re responsible for. Um, so obviously, whenever a ticket eventually hits a developer's, Uh, gets the, the, you know, it gets assigned to a developer. Um, they, you know, create a branch, work on the feature. Um, we always, like I said before, we're following more of a trunk based development approach where, you know, we try and split up our stuff into very granular bite sized chunks. Um, and then, so, you know, obviously each PR, um, you know, is something sort of like very small, you know, the, the least amount of lines of code change, the, the, the better. Uh, it's to kind of eliminate the blast radius if there's any issues, if it hits production. Um, cause obviously like, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, you are going to break production at some point in time. So if you can kind of just minimize the, the blowback. Yeah. Um, so anyways, um, you know, it, it, it goes, uh, the PR is created. Um, and then we use a, a code owner, code owners file. Some, some, we use a, a blend between code owners and then also sometimes there's manual toggling of certain people depending on the project. Um, and so basically once, um, You know, once you get three check marks, so our policy is three, once we get three check marks, any senior developer in the company has permission to merge the master. Um, okay. So you get three reviews, three check marks, um, you know, the merge to master, the PR is closed. Um, obviously there's the communication aspect back and forth in between that time as well, all done through Exoldo on Slack. Um, and so then, it, you know, merge to master and then our automated systems um, sort of spin up and like build all the containers run all the tests. Uh, deployed to production. Um, I did leave out one part. When you create a pull request as well, we build a replica of stage of uh, of our production environment. So we we build individual staging environments for each pull request, cool. um, and that's kind of that's kind of handy. It's kind of used during the process, but that's basically it in a nutshell. And um, what's the problem you identified uh, before using Axel? Um, Like I kind of alluded to at the start of our conversation, it was just the terrible sort of like the terrible code review process um, in GitHub. It was just really cumbersome. Um, their notification system is very cryptic and, you know, there's tons of activity flying, flooding into it and they don't have a nice like Slack integration. Um, so yeah, it was just, that was kind of the, the, the pain point. And did that result into like a um, slow pickup time and slow um, pull request review time, uh, cycle yep. time overall? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, 
and that that was the like that was the ultimate sort of problem was that we wanted to move to more of a trunk based development approach where we were constantly shipping to production you know 10 20 30 times a day in certain situations and obviously the biggest blocker for that uh, was the code review uh, process um, and then on top of that i guess i would kind of elaborate even if github had a great code review process the fact that like we do everything through slack so like our, all of it's, it's the communications hub for the entire company so anything that doesn't run through there um it, it just doesn't get the it just doesn't get tightly knit into our sort of like you know daily like sort of workflow so the fact that you guys integrated so tightly with slack was was a huge huge thing and uh I think you've been using Axelor for a year, a little bit more than a year. Do you remember how much time it would take for people to uh, pick up the pull request before that? Um, yeah, here I can tell you. Sorry, one second here. I can literally give you the exact number. <laughs> That's great. I think you started using Excel in April 2022, to be exact. April 2022. So it basically cut our time by like like 65% roughly. Wow. Is that the, the PR cycle time or just a review time? The, uh, the cycle time as a whole. And, and wow. this was like, I would say, this is, we've made a, a few small changes um, to the process, but nothing that significant that would affect the, the cycle time as much as just using Exola, really. Wow. It's great to have uh, exact numbers. Uh, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> no problem. And um, do you remember how was the transition to using Axelo? I think I, I remember you guys started with a small team uh, for a few months, and then you onboarded yeah. uh, most of the team in agency analytics. Um, do you have some more info you can share with us? Yeah, so we when we first started using it, um, it was just like we used it, we trialed it with one one of my teams actually first, um, and then as we sort of like got more comfortable with it, everyone was like, you know, we're not going back. Like this is way better, a way better way to, to do things. Um, so then, like you said, we slowly rolled it out to the rest of the company. There was a little apprehension at first, I think, from some developers, just because I just think it's a natural human reaction to kind of, you know, whenever there's something that's changing. Um, you know, some people are a little more apprehensive than, than others, but once they kind of saw how more product, like for, first and foremost, everyone who'd used it, like really loved it. So like everyone would kind of be like, guys, what are you doing? You're wasting so much time. You have to use Exolo. It's just way better. <laughs> um, okay. so then we eventually got everyone on board and everyone, like once you use it for like a couple days and it becomes like a little, it, you know, you get over that hump of where it's not a new thing in, in the, in the workflow. Um, it's just so obvious how much better it is. So it was, it was a pretty easy process to get everyone on board. Okay. And um, so now like every pull request creates a, a channel in Slack. What, what kind of conversations do you see happening in Slack uh, that, uh, that is different from before? I think before people treated these code reviews as like, a, you know, it was just, ah, oh, man, I got to do this. Like, it's just an, another, like it was almost like a chore in a way. Um, but now because we have kind of free flowing communication in Slack, it's just, it's led to like just creating a more collaborative environment, I would say for every pull request. Um, I think before um, some things might actually have hit production that might not have necessarily been, uh, you know, as vetted as much as possible. Um, but I think because we have this, you know, tight integration with Slack, it kind of opens up the communication channel and then we end up talking about just the more, uh, we have a more elaborate discussion about whatever, whatever thing that PR is, is modifying. Um, so it's actually like led us to kind of have better architectural skills and it's led us to kind of be more discerning before we deploy something to production. So it, it's kind of like put us in a spot where we can be more thoughtful and just have better communication. Wow. That's amazing. 